Hello everyone! Welcome to Flandro SciBytes from Flandro Science Center and Planetarium at the University of Arizona. I am a senior undergraduate student studying biology at the university. Today we will learn about insects through exploring insect mimicry. Insect mimicry has evolved over time to make insects blend in with all sorts of environments to act as a way to keep predators from eating them. There are two types of insect mimicry. One is when a harmless bug looks like a dangerous bug or other animal. For example, the hoverfly looks just like the venomous wasp, so predators will avoid attacking the fly because they think it is a wasp, but it's actually harmless. Another example of this kind of mimicry is the larval or caterpillar stage of a species of moth which looks and even acts just like a snake. Another kind of insect mimicry is when two different species, which are both dangerous, mimic each other to each other's benefit. An example of this type of mimicry is the viceroy butterfly, which looks just like the poisonous monarch butterfly, but both exhibit unpleasant taste to potential predators, which leads to the predators avoiding both species. Finally, another type of blending in defense mechanism used by insects is camouflage, which allows the insects to hide from potential predators. Camouflage is when an insect disguises itself into the general background or looks like an uninteresting object. Some famous examples here are the stick bug and the leaf bug. Another cool example of this is the orchid mantis, which blends into flowers to capture any prey that may want to feed on the flower or its nectar. I will now show some pictures of camouflaged bugs, and I want you to see if you can find them in the photo. Whoever is presenting, please pause the video to give a moment to see each picture. If a group of harmless bugs and harmful bugs that looked like and lived with each other, do you think predators would attack them? How do you think the harmless species would change over time? I hope you've learned something new here on this episode of Flandro SciBytes from Flandro Science Center and Planetarium, inspiring future scientists since 1974. See you next time!